And we're live, ladies and gentlemen, on the new episode of the LA Trek Podcast. I'm Fred Lambert, and as usual, I'm joined by Seth Wintraub. How are you doing today, Seth? I'm good. All right. Uh, before we jump in, a quick thank you to Electrify America for sponsoring the show again this week. Uh, we're going to have more to say on them later on. Stay tuned for that. But let's jump in because a uh, ton of news this week, ton of news. Of course, what just came out um, early this morning, and it looks like it's uh, it's this, this new thing now for the production delivery numbers now, two quarters in a row that's uh, before, um, before the market opened instead of after the market closing. And um, very impressive results right here. 139,300 vehicles delivered. And even more impressive production at 145,000 units. So production recovered completely and then some from um, um, from pre pre pandemic. And uh, unfortunately, though, like I said, I thought that Wall Street was a big optimistic on the whole thing. Like the consensus came at I saw as high as like 145,000 deliveries, but the average consensus ended up at 140,000. So Tesla still didn't beat the uh, expectation, but they beat my expectation for sure. I thought it would be much lower than that. So that's uh, that's awesome. And really, uh, like it, what we should be comparing it to, I think the most is is the broader automotive market because, to be fair, it, the broader automotive market has been um, uh, going back up a lot quicker than I thought they would from the from the pandemic, like especially this quarter. But they're still mostly down. Like I just saw Audi posting 16% down in the US. Like it's still it's still not a great <laughs> a great quarter. They're still down because of like mostly I would attribute it to the to the pandemic and the economic impact of it. While Tesla is not only not down, I mean they are uh, did I post the year over year result? I thought I thought I did post that somewhere. Um 43% year over year increase. Right. 97,000 last uh, yeah. quarter, the last year's quarter. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. That, that that's like that that's on par with Tesla what is trying to do. They're trying to go for like 50% or something like that. So, pretty close to it, pretty close to it within like the, what's uh, like again, the broader automotive market has been doing better after the pandemic, but still like it's uh, a lot more people or without jobs. Though I would assume that a lot of people that uh, can afford Teslas are in jobs that are less affected by the pandemic, but still, a lot of people would be wor worried about uh, making a, a new car purchase these days and, and whatnot. So I'm very impressed by the whole thing. Of course, we reported also earlier this week that Tesla achieved a record delivery volume for the, uh, well, n not the last week of the quarter, but, but uh, last, last week. So the... What, what week was that? Up to the 26th. Yeah, the week up to the 26th. So ending the 26th. And uh, that's the day that Elon uh, thanked, uh, thanked the Tesla employees for a uh, great work on deliveries. And we learned that that came because um, sources are, are telling us that Tesla had the highest delivery volume they ever achieved during that week. So now, now, now that makes me think, uh, made me reinterpret really the, the original email that we saw from Elon a week prior saying that they had a chance at, at getting record deliveries. So again, Elon with those emails is always being a little bit murky, not telling us everything So because he knows it's going to get leaked. So he doesn't want uh, clear information going out. But the way they, they were getting close now to achieve the record delivery and they probably achieved it that week and then add four they, they had another four or five days depending on when they achieved it um to beat the delivery record and they beat it by a significant margin 20 27 000 cars i think which at which is a lot to do in, in, in five days of course but at the delivery volume that tesla was achieving then that is uh pr pretty pretty incredible where, yeah, where were you yeah go ahead well, I was going to say, uh, so they're filling out their inventory too, because they they made what 145,000 cars, so they've got 5,000 more cars in the channel than they had uh, previously. Do you think that's attributed to sending cars to Europe, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Well, normally they don't try to send too many cars to Europe at the at the end of the quarter, but 
uh, they did say in the press release too that the days of sale inventory is down based on their delivery volume. So, but that's again, that's based on the delivery volume that they were achieving. I don't like, I have to assume that they're using the whole quarter because it would be deceiving if not. Because if you just use like the exiting delivery volume rate, it would be, of course, it would be down because they had the crazy hand of the quarter for deliveries. Um, so yeah, apparently it's it's not they they're not building up inventory with that based on uh, days of sales because the days of sales for those who don't know it's the total inventory how many days it takes for them to to get rid of the inventory. So of course, if they are adding like uh, how, many, how many did you say they were adding this quarter to the inventory based on production? I was like uh, five thousand. Yeah, six. Yeah, five six thousand units. Um, they can get rid of that in like two days now. <laughs> so, right. That goes pretty quick. Yeah. So, well, based again on the the exit rate, which I don't think is accurate. If if you do a full quarter, it's probably like a, a week of inventory they, they have or something like that, which is, of course, nothing compared to the rest of the industry. Again, and Tesla already had uh, days of sell uh, inventory that was lower than the industry, so that's that's very good. Yeah, and there's still a lot of supply. I mean, there's no supply, there's no demand problem, right? There's like uh, a lot of things Tesla can do, like sell Model Y in Europe, for instance, or, uh, you know, more colors, more interiors. There's like one option at this point. Yeah. So, so it's not, it doesn't seem like there's any kind of demand issue. No, no, I don't, I don't see that at all either. Like uh, the concern for Tesla is always more like the uh, logistics of it and everything. And apparently there's been strong improvement this quarter in terms of logistics. Elon said that it was the toughest quarter ever in logistics, um, which I assume he's basing that on the kind of volume that Tesla was had to do at the end of the quarter. But from the my sources, from the from the sales channels, they've been actually impressed by the delivery rates, like the, 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 the smoothness of the deliveries this quarter versus prior quarter except for of course the the mess that happened um, last wednesday that, yeah that was last wednesday wednesday with all the internal system being down hmm. all right um next news is that walmart placing a massive new tesla semi orders it's been a while since when we heard that uh like uh <laughs> That that car, that truck was unveiled back in 2017, and if you remember, after that, like the next maybe six months after that, like every week we were hearing of a new order that was coming in for the truck. The truck was supposed to come in 2019, of course. So uh, the delays have uh, thrown some uh, through some cold water on uh, the desire from from customers to to place orders. And again, placing orders on this is not is not cheap. To it's uh, the deposit. I think it's twenty thousand dollars deposit now. It was it was raised. Uh, uh, yeah, it was raised from a five thousand deposit per truck to twenty thousand deposit. So it, it's not cheap to reserve one of those trucks. And Walmart was a was an early adopter. Like right after the unveiling, the the reserved fifteen trucks, and apparently they've been adding to their orders over time. But what they announced this week is that they are tripling the order to hundred and thirty Tesla semis. Do you think that was uh, Nikola related, related at all? Uh, I don't remember Walmart uh, placing an order on on Nikola trucks, but maybe they were thinking about. Yeah, um, maybe they would, and then they were like, "Ah, we'll we'll skip that now." <laughs> and do it. Right. But I'm expecting a lot of that happening though, because there's a lot of big companies that yeah, have Heisen been. Bush is gonna, definitely going to have to bail. Yeah, and I think a lot of them will will, will finally bail, and uh, when they do, then they're going to have to go somewhere else if they want to still achieve their their. Um, fleet electrification goals which is what walmart is trying to do here so what i found interesting is like it, it's a big order that is being placed by a big customer that i would assume as um communication with tesla and so the the, the should have better clarity into a, a timeline of, on, on those trucks i think they didn't they didn't say when they expect delivery but uh, they say that they are placing the the, the the order as part of their goal to convert 20% of their fleet to electric vehicles by the end of 2022. So I think that's a, that's a probably the timeline that they are discussed with Tesla, getting those trucks by the end of 2022, which I think is realistic. Um, of course, the last thing we heard about the Tesla Semi is that Tesla plans to build a few more prototypes uh, late this year and then move to volume production next year Apparently at uh, Gigafactory Texas, that's what mm. uh, they indicated in the 
last or the one before last uh, earning call. All right, the other interesting thing that we saw this week is th those rumors of uh, acquisition from Tesla or buying stakes at least. This one, this one seems very serious. This one's uh, almost confirmed, I would say. Uh, it, it's um, an automotive supplier, a uh, production line supplier, actually, in um, in Germany. They're called T uh, ATW, and they are, they are a subsidiary of uh, ATS, which is a big um, automotive industry uh, supplier and engineering firm uh, based in Canada. But ATW is a subdivision in Germany, and they are specifically... Um, specializing in making battery uh, assembly lines and um, transmission assembly lines for the auto industry there. They have big clients, including Mercedes-Benz and, and uh, BMW. And there were rumors recently that they might be going under. And But uh, what we learn now is that Tesla swooped in and, and bought the company of uh, a company of 210 employees. So why we said it's pretty much confirmed? Well, there's several publications in Germany that are reporting it. And the uh, the European even said that uh, there were a celebration of it at, uh, this week at the company's location in, uh, oh boy, New Newid, Newid in Germany. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know where it is because I did look it up. And uh, why I looked it up is because I wanted to see where it is in comparison to Tesla Grumman. And it's pretty close. It's about an hour away from uh, Tesla's Grumman location in Prum, which is the, the, the biggest. And they, they have a few locations, uh, Tesla Grumman in Germany, but the, I think the biggest one is in Prum. It's only about an hour away. So my thinking is they prob Tesla Grumman is probably going to absorb this yeah. company, which is going to help them grow a lot. Which Tesla Grumman is already big, so but uh, I think could still uh, make it like maybe 20, 30% bigger just with that in terms of uh, workforce I'm talking about. And Tesla Grumman, uh, his job is basically designing and producing assembly line, production lines for Tesla. So basically so, the machines that make the machines. Exactly. And the, and this this goes uh, hand in hand with that, what, what uh, ATW is doing. So, and we know that Tesla right now is heading production line faster than anybody else. We, we were just talking about uh, Roadrunner, um, the, everything that was unveiled at Battery Day, those machines are, are being built in Germany by Tesla Grumman, so th they can definitely help with that. They can also help, of course, with uh, Gigafactory Berlin that's going to be adding production lines very soon, so they can help build that too. So I think it's going to be a very similar situation than with Tesla Grumman, which which back then, back before Tesla acquired them, they already had a bunch of contracts with uh, Automotive, uh, automotive suppliers and automakers, especially German automakers, and they started phasing out those contracts as Tesla bought the company, mm -hmm. and uh, then the, all the company entirely focused on on, on Tesla. I think and we're going to see the same thing here with ATW. Makes sense. Yeah. The other rumored acquisition, I, I'm a little bit more skeptical about, but let's discuss it. Uh, it's that Tesla is apparently looking to acquire a stake in LG's battery business. So I didn't even know that, but LG Chem is not just <laughs> but, but LG's but LG, of course, is bigger known as like a giant electronic company. Uh, they do TVs, they do phones, they do appliances, they do everything. Uh, then LG Chem was mostly known for their batteries, but they do other things too. Uh, so what we learn now is that LG Chem is looking into breaking down its battery business and um listing that alone and we we hear a lot of that kind of talk these days like breaking down the if, especially for big companies that people like for me for example i wouldn't really invest in lg but if you tell me i can invest in just their battery business then maybe i'll be looking into that yeah that would have been good for panasonic because yeah their, their battery business was booming while they're like tvs were dying yeah, that's a great example because Panasonic, yeah, that your business basically took over, like saved the company. Uh, but a lot of people wouldn't have invested in Panasonic otherwise from the battery. So you split that out and it and becomes a different business. So the rumor was uh, shared by the uh, Korea Times, which is a serious outlet in Korea, in South Korea. 
and they say that Tesla is looking to acquire a 10% stake in the company. So it, it looks like it, it might be part of the deal of, of splitting up the, the company into uh, LG Energy Solution. Why I'm saying a little bit more skeptical? Well, first of all, it's just, it just looks, even just based on the report, that it's um, a pr preliminary talks. Did they even say that? It's, oh yeah, it's from the bank sector too. So it's like, so it, it's not from LG or not from Tesla. So it's someone that would be part of the deal to 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 separate the company, and then Tesla would be buying into it. That was part of the talks, I guess. Um, but why I'm also skeptical is that. First of all, we never heard Tesla do that before. Just acquiring a stake in the company, right. we've heard that like Tesla has been doing plenty of uh, acquisition. That, that that's for sure. But it's always they, they try to take a majority stake in the company. Right. Um, also, it's a big one because even at ten percent, I would assume that it's bigger than the Solar City acquisition. Uh, uh, probably. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I wonder if it's an offensive move, like. You know, LG obviously is like a lifeline for GM, uh, mm. Porsche, a lot of these other OEMs. Um, I wonder if Tesla having a stake there, they can kind of control the battery flow um, a little bit, and they can take it, take a little bit more of the the world's supply. Yes, well, it, it definitely makes sense for Tesla to have a part in the in the, in the supplier like that because LG is becoming a more important supplier for for, for Tesla, especially with the the Tesla China move, though we can, we're going to get into that too later because there's news on that front. But uh, I I would think that LG, like Tesla, wouldn't be exactly welcome because LG is making a ton of moves uh, with with other suppliers, like like you just said, like GM, like the the big deal they have with GM, but they have a ton of other deals with other automakers. Wouldn't it be more difficult for GM to for LG to make deals with automakers? while they have their biggest competitor being a, a stake owner on right. the company and that was part of the the deal that i was like yeah so i i put like a three out of ten chances of happening right now 30 percent chance of happening yeah it's kind of weird that um i mean lg chem i think is the group of lg that makes the solar panels too but i wonder if they're splitting they're sending that out as well um, well, they, they are apparently calling it LG Energy Solution, so maybe the solar panel would be in that too, because you know, producing yeah energy. I don't know. It, it's interesting. It would be like a, a fun move to to look into, but uh, ver looks like very early talk right now. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of batteries, Tesla cut the price of the Model Three this week, and it, it's apparently because they are launching the Cobalt Free LFP, the iron phosphate uh, change in in the car so it's something we've been reporting on for the last few months uh, i think back in june tesla maybe not as a few months ago tesla applied for it so we knew it was coming that they wanted to manufacture the model 3 with the iron phosphate battery then elon musk mentioned it on the last talk the last earning calls or the one before that i don't remember uh, but he said that the iron phosphate battery now have improve in energy density enough that it makes sense to use them in the lower hand version of the car reducing the cost reducing the use of, of of cobalt and still achieving the range that they are looking for so tesla did some decent price cuts here that the standard range plus becomes a two hundred and fifty thousand yen uh, and that's the one that's getting the lfp apparently the long range uh, rear wheel drive version is not getting the lfp but it also got a price cut uh, to 309 uh, well 210,000 yens really um that's down from 344 but like the, the the interesting news here is that the standard range plus after subsidies now ends up costing about the equivalent of $37,000 US and that's actually lower than the standard range plus in the US made in the US of course so for the first time, the, the Chinese version is equivalently less than in the U.S. Where there's no subsidies. To be in fair, the where there's no subsidies, but also where Tesla is apparently now in the U uh, in, in in China is making great improvement in, in on its margin on the Model S on the the cost of producing it. So I think that has a bigger part to do with it, and of course the LFP is uh, is, is, is uh, has something to do with it, but. If the long-range version doesn't have the LFP batteries and also gets a, a decent slash cut, uh, 
of like what uh, it looks like that's uh, a big almost, cut. yeah almost eight percent nine percent maybe um that's big yep yeah and of course that's a version that we don't have in the us anymore so we cannot really compare it but uh and then that's also basic like without any um uh autopilot or anything like that right but yeah it bodes well for for the, and then of course that that price cut came yesterday so right before the end of the quarter so it wasn't used in any way to like bolster quality numbers for tesla but uh, i would think that uh q4 is gonna look good for tesla in china well people could have put orders in you know a day ahead and then i think that you have to put down a thousand bucks or something if you put in an order mm -hmm. i don't know what it is in china but yeah i don't know if they record that or not well that was october 1st so it's not okay. like it, it didn't even and also october 1st here which is also later in china i don't know how that worked but yep i mean I, if everything so far like the something that tesla investors especially should should take away is that tesla having multiple factories one in each continent especially when berlin comes online next year it's gonna have a massive impact on tesla's financial situation because you, you can see how uh gigafactory shanghai helped tesla and there's just one more factories Tesla is still stuck with this process of like having giant hand of the quarter push. And this one might have been the biggest yet, looks like. Um, at, at, at least the delivery rate for sure was the highest yet in terms of percentage of entire quarterly sales. I don't know, but looks like it might have been. Um, we're going to see a lot less of that once. Yeah, Gigafactory, uh, no, Tesla Fremont doesn't have to produce or have to, has to produce less, fewer cars for Europe, and then they are produced in Gigafactory Berlin instead and shorten the, the transit time. That's going to have a giant impact on that. So uh, then you have Texas, too, which is going to do the same thing for the US. US is a big country. If you split it in half, it's going to be a little bit easier. So yeah, um, that I'm very hopeful on that front for Tesla. Of course, there's also cost and vintage uh, there. On the lithium front, uh, we learned this week that Tesla signed a deal with Piedmont um, Lithium. It's an Australia-based company, but uh, the, their project is in North Carolina, uh, right here. And Tesla apparently signed an agreement with them for a third of the 160,000 ton per uh, per year capacity of their planned uh, uh, planned factory. Upon uh, that factory mining operation in North Carolina, and it sent the stock surging. And I, here I see two hundred percent, but it's actually I think it ended up the day at like three hundred percent or something like that. Yeah. So if you had money there, good for you. Though I think it went way down after that too. So, um, uh, so yeah, and it's also it's it's not a project that it's an operation yet. So it's contingent on on bringing the project to operation. They're gonna need millions and millions uh, of investment to, to bring the project uh, to term. But of course, I think the supply deal with Tesla, which is a, a 10 year supply deal, I think, uh, 10 year supply deal for 30% of the capacity, it's it's huge. So they're going to be able to secure uh, financing for, for the project a lot easier with that. So it, it's likely going to happen. And uh, they are aiming to start the production of the, the lithium in 20, uh, July 2022. Yeah, the delivery is between July 2022 and July 2023. So it's not for it there yet, but if you remember, Tesla is planning to have its volume capacity of, uh, is it 100 kilowatt hour the first aim to have in three years? And that plays them around the end of the year, 2023. Are they going to be involved in uh, uh, Nevada at all? Do we know? PMO or, do you mean? or? Yeah, I mean, or is Tesla going to get their own mining equipment and, and do that? Apparently they will. That, that that's what they said. But um, it's so early stage that it, it definitely makes sense for Tesla to secure lithium for other companies in in mid term, short term, even even long term, really. Because um, the like the, the, what they released about the lithium plant Tesla at the battery day wasn't really clear. Like the whole like oh table salt, uh, we put take the dirt out, take the dirt back in. Like a lot of people were like, huh? <laughs> yeah, especially like, there's the been mining people. Yeah, there's been billions of dollars invested in lithium over the years, and uh, 
the, the, they just made it sound like uh, it, it, it was all useless. Of course, we say that, but at the same time, Tesla has made some great leaps, uh, le leap and bound improvement in plenty of other sectors so i'm not doubting them that they would do good in lithium too but i think even tesla is clearly uh being careful about those plans all right uh, next one solar roof price reduction and an updated updated website to look at that house right there they posted a bunch of pictures of new projects that looks like more realistic so a little bit less, like retouch images that they had before so i appreciate that and it also came with a slight uh price reduction for the solar roof so i use an example here that um i had before uh, right here so no that's not large enough for me to see but it's for uh, almost 4,000 square foot roof with a 12.3 kilowatt system on it. Uh, it used to be $57,000. Now it adds up to about uh, $55,000 before incentives, of course. Uh, so a uh, few thousand dollars off of the price of the solar roof. Uh, Tesla also updated this com comparison here with the um, premium roof premium roof with solar panels and their solution instead because of course this is really just a product if you're planning to replace your roof in the short term i'd say midterm very favorable comparison over 25 years <laughs> uh, of course they calculate the electricity production over those years but uh, yeah they, they shared this cool to a uh, new uh, strength of the of the panel it's not loading. Try well, you, could, right. yeah, you can see it here anyway. Um, that, that's the thing Tesla is claiming that the, their panels are much stronger than even the most premium roof that you can uh, you can buy. But roof tiles, of course, because different kind of roofs you can get too. And they show also the uh, installation process of it a little bit more. I'm going to have a report on that coming soon. Uh, you haven't figured out everything just yet. Uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, it's still very early stage. If you're planning to get a solar roof, I, I, I know a bunch of people that have one right now and they are very satisfied for the product. It looks amazing. It does produce electricity. Of course, the longevity of it, Tesla is, is guaranteeing it in, in its warranty, so that's good. Uh, but uh, if it will very, um, if it will hold up on, on that front, we'll see. But I also know several people right now that are in the middle of the installation process and it's kind of a nightmare too because Tesla hasn't figured out everything. Uh where am I? At? Oh yeah, with the solar roof price reduction, also an increase in price in power wall for the power wall. Uh I have to thank a reader for that because I didn't even catch it. Uh, he caught it in my other article and sent it to me. It's uh Rish Haija Sa. I'm sorry if I messed up your name but uh, Mr. Sa, thank you very much. It's a, it's not a big deal. It's a five hundred dollar price increase to from sixty five hundred to seven thousand dollars for the power roof, of, uh, power roof, <laughs> power <laughs> wall itself. Um, of course, there's a bunch of uh, like there's a gateway and other hardware that needs to to, to be added to the power wall and installation. So if um, you put all that together, it's actually closer to twelve thousand eleven hundred five hundred dollars um, before incentive. Because if you match it to a solar system in most places, you can also get an incentive for that. So it, it, it can be cheaper. And there's a lot of places also, especially in California that gets, uh, uh, incentive at the utility level too. So you can get much cheaper. And because of those incentives in California and a few other places, this, the demand is, is through the roof right now for, for the, uh, power wall. So it makes sense for Tesla to increase the price because they're going to sell out anyway. And you can make some more money from that, and then uh, put that somewhere else to 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 go for the mission here. So uh, I'm not mad at that. Uh, yeah, I mean, b between the forest fires that are increasing the demand in California right, right now, yeah. the incentive in California period uh, are, are are great. I mean, um, Tesla making deals with other solar, so like also like a lot of people now, if they're getting solar, they're getting battery with it. Tesla has a very high take rate for the power wall with, with solar. And other companies also have a very high take rate too. Like now Tesla is supplying Sonova, I think, uh, SunPower. All the big ones are being supplied by Tesla now. And uh, I, I saw that Sonova was reporting a 35% take rate with their installation. So uh, they, they, they have ton of demand for it. And 
No, it's uh, five hundred dollar more expensive. Which should we oh, do yeah, the uh, read real quick? Yeah, go ahead. All right. This episode of the Electric Podcast is brought to you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, by Electrify America. EA is the nation's largest coast-to-coast -coast electric vehicle charging network with stations every 70 miles on average along major highway routes and full of ultra-fast 350 kilowatt chargers for capable electric vehicles. They are dedicated to providing electric vehicle drivers with the speed, security, and freedom they deserve, like freedom from range anxiety, freedom from boredom as they wait too long to for a charge, and of course, the freedom of the open road. Even if the open road is the one is just the one nearby. They believe in electric feature just like you. If you're an electric vehicle driver or just want, wondering what it's like to be one, find out what they're up to at electrifyamerica.com. That's electrifyamerica.com. Electrify America. Hello, freedom. Hello, freedom. Yeah. Uh, thanks again for Electrify America. This week, the, the unveil also, like the, they're starting to deploy solar at their, at their, tree, at their station, the charging station, which is super cool. Yep. Now they have Tesla power uh, power packs and a bunch of them, and uh, they're adding like those solar uh, what do you call it? A canopy, solar canopy, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Awning, roof, whatever. Yeah, because it's also nice to have shade. <laughs> Start with too. Like, right. I'm more, I'm even more looking at, at shade sometimes, especially in the U.S. Like even I'm in California, whatever. I, just, I do like my shade on if I'm staying in the car sometime for. And now Tesla is, Tesla is even encouraging people to stay in the car <laughs> with their totally. uh, Netflix on and their games and everything. So when you you stop at a station, you're like, give me some shades. So I like that Electrify America is, uh, is uh, looking to that. And at the same time, if you have shade, you may as well put some solar panel on top of that. All right. Tesla released a bunch of uh, software update this week. Um, the main one uh, started at the new 2020.40. For everyone, there's some small features here. Uh, the first one is, um, sorry, <clears throat> is uh, linking your uh, a Bluetooth device, a priority Bluetooth device, to to your driver profile, so that if uh, the, uh, of course, the linking the driver profile already to the, your phone or your your key fob, and when you get into your car, now it will also link the Bluetooth to that device. Uh, meaning that like if you're with someone that also uses the car, so mainly like a husband and wife or husband or partner situation that both uses the car, you if you if you approach a car at the same time, it's gonna most likely just pick up the closest phone to it. And then that's gonna what gonna start like playing your music and, and whatnot, you know, your, your your calls or whatever to it when you might want the driver to it but at the same time like it's not always a driver like <laughs> a lot of times if i'm driving with my girlfriend for example i want her phone to be linked to the to it because like she wants she wants to do your music or something like that so but at least if you're driving alone well if you're driving alone i guess it doesn't change anything because your phone is gonna <laughs> like i said it's a very minor feature <laughs> that being hided here the use cases are not very big yeah, but I think it's kind of it's it, we're on a long road to get getting user profiles. Like uh, one day you'll walk in with your phone into your, the the car, and it'll have all your stuff, and then your girlfriend or wife will walk in, and she'll have all of her stuff, and maybe even it goes between cars. Like maybe if you have two Teslas, and you have two adults, and each one, whenever they go into their Tesla, they get all their stations and music mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. Yeah, it makes sense. This is a baby step. Yeah. The next feature is glove box pin. Uh, it's um, it's basically for, well, it's it's for Model Three and and Model uh, Y really because those are the car that you, you don't have a physical button for it. And the prompt to prompt the glove box to open, you need to go to the touch screen. And now they are making so that you can add a pin to that, so that not anyone can uh, open your glove box really. You already had a pin to drive that you can add. So if someone gets into your car, they cannot steal it if you have a pin to drive. But they could open your glove box and steal all your valuables, which I hope you don't keep in your glove box. Uh, with that update for some other cars, not for all cars. So well, those are well, not for all cars either, since the uh, uh, that glove box pin is from all uh, three and Y. There's also this. The new charge port eater that we've first heard of uh, with the Model Y uh, 
Tesla never really disclosed it in any way. The only way we heard about it, if you remember, is when uh, Jerry Rig everything, a very, uh, very good YouTuber, if you, if you don't know him, he, he does some very cool engineering stuff and, and, and breakdowns of phones and, and, and whatnot. Uh, Tesla invited him to, to check out the Model Y uh, cold weather testing in Alaska uh, earlier this year. And um, Tesla told him there that they had they added a charge port heater for, for, for the Model Y. And apparently they added it to the Model 3 too, though we don't know exactly when. Uh, actually, I, I was supposed to check the comments on that one too. Because uh, I has the commenter, if they get the feature, let us know when your Model 3 was built so we can get a better idea of, uh, of, of, of uh, who has that charge uh, a charge port heater here. But the, the, the main theory, of course, is that it was added around that same time. So either around when the Model Y started being built, which is in, while it was being delivered in, in March. And um, uh, but that feature was only disclosed in that video, which was posted in May. So well, around those times, Model 3 owners should start getting the charge port eater. And that new uh, update basically enables uh, people to use it to defrost their, their, their charge port. Uh, which, which uh, funny enough, like it was a problem at first. I know like when my article on it became viral, when my, my uh, door handle was stuck and my charge port was also stuck. Um, with my first uh, my first winter with with the Model Three, but then I, when, after that, Tesla started pushing some new software update that better use the climate control inside the car to defrost. Not sure how they do that, like if they can like concentrate the hair towards the back of the car or something. But it did help. Uh, it, I haven't had that much problem with it, though. At the same time, I haven't been in the uh, in Quebec that much. Yeah, you're not having that problem in California. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, my car has been used by someone who does enjoy a, a garage, so he couldn't report on it either. But I did hear less about it too because I'm pretty active on the uh, Quebec uh, Tesla owner forums, and we've been hearing less about this uh, this problem. But of course, so it would be the the first winter now uh, coming up with uh, Tesla having a, a charge port either on Model Three. And of course, model, it's going to be the Model Y's first winter too, basically, since it started delivery in March and mainly in California and whatnot. So, hey, which makes me think Tesla should release the Model Y winter tire package now. Like, uh, they're always so late with that. They're so Californian about that. Like, they, it's like they forget about it and, like, oh, it's like well, now, now they haven't forgotten about that. So, hopefully, it's coming soon. But as soon as November, uh, a lot of places they require those, those uh, snow tires or winter tires. So, Hopefully they move that quickly. I know that I know that when I bought my Model Three was a real problem. Like I couldn't get a, a, a wheel and an entire kit from Tesla. I had to buy different wheels, different tires from uh, a third party. And I got my car in September, I think. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, another update here. So. Right after that uh, 20, uh, 20 20.40, Tesla released a 2020.40.1. And uh, what it includes really, it's it's a very slight update to the traffic light and, and stop sign uh, control feature that lets you like start navigating the intersection a little bit more. For the traffic lights now, if you remember a few months ago, Tesla, well, when Tesla first included the feature, it wouldn't go through a green light without you confirming it. So through the stock um, steering wheel stock or to the accelerator pedal. Then they release an update that lets you go through a green light if you had a lead car. Now they're removing that requirement. So they let you go through some green light without a lead car. So they, they, say, they, they say as you approach a green traffic light in some situation where there's a straight path through their intersection. So I think that's the important part. So where there's a straight path to the intersection, the traffic light and stop sign control feature may no longer require explicit driver confirmation. So don't expect it to be anywhere. It looks like the most simple kind of uh, intersection. And of course, the, it, the, the feature still doesn't allow turning through an intersection. So it's only when you go straight. And it's also, I mean, so that can be confusing. If you go straight and if straight path, I think they mean two different things here. So, there's plenty of intersection. You're going straight, but their intersection is still like not completely straight. Not like there's some angle to it, or you move your car a little bit between 
the, the section in the irritation section where there's no line, because of course Autopilot requires a lot um, to, it's enabled through line detection and then clearing, clearing a plat when there's no line. So again, be super careful when using that feature. I, I know I have been <laughs> since I had my, uh, like it's been what, two or three weeks now that I have my new computer and I, and I got that feature with it. And uh, I've been mostly using it like at night where there's no one on the road where I, I can more confidently use the feature. When uh, during the day, like I use it, but I get close to a, a traffic light and I'm like, and I remove it. <laughs> I remove it. <laughs> so be careful with it. I've, so you haven't, uh, have you gone through with it at night and it works or? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it works. It, it, it does okay. work. Uh, yeah, it's just, it, it works, but it's not too confident about it. Because hmm. like, Autopilot is very good when there's lines. When there's clear lines, Autopilot is very good. But right. then sometimes where the lines, for some reason, you can be on the highway here. So no intersection at all on the highway. And there's a, a lot of the lines or the painted lines are not good anymore or whatever it is. Um, you will, the Autopilot will try to recreate them and, and still go through. But sometimes they will give you like an error message and everything. So it's, intersection is basically the same thing. Like there's a just a, whatever it is, like a 40 yard or whatever, that there's no line. And now the Autopilot is trying to navigate through that without the lines. It's very good at detecting it, like I, detecting the, the, the traffic light, the stop signs. That's very good. But sometimes, like, I feel the car, like, shaking, giving me, like, a little shake in the in the steering wheel as they go through the intersection, trying to figure out, oh, do I go straight? Do I go a little bit left and everything? So, yeah, it, it just doesn't inspire confidence, hmm. which which is good, really, because... Yeah, you don't want to be overconfident. Yeah, if Autopad has a problem, it's people being overconfident with it. All right, the Ford Mustang Mackie got a price update this week and a, a good one. Uh, haul prices are down. Um, so it's basically a thousand to three thousand dollars per variant, and uh, I, I forgot how many variants there are of that that Mustang. Oh, yeah. And there's actually another one. Like if you look at the screen here, well, we see one, two, three, four, five, six. But there's a seventh one, the GT, that mm. uh, uh, hasn't gotten a, a price change. So that one, the same price. The reason behind the price change is, um, if I'm quoting here, Ford, uh, exceptional value has always been a hallmark of the Mustang brand. In addition to its great electric driving range and performance, we're adjusting Mustang Mackie pricing to remain fully competitive in a segment that is seeing dynamic price changes. And you had a good point about that. You, you, you had a theory why they are bringing the price down? It's not the why, I don't think. I think it's the VW ID3. The timing yeah. would make sense. It was just it was just announced last week, so right. They don't want to take. I mean, they probably have a, you know, a, a they're getting buyers at a certain rate, and then they saw maybe a like a, a cutoff there, or maybe they thought the VW ID three was going to come in at like forty five, fifty um, thousand bucks. So the fact that it comes in at forty and it'll be less in a few years, mm -hmm. uh, I think thirty three or something is the is like the base model that's made in the U.S. Um, I don't think Ford necessarily believes that they have a more premium brand than VW. So I think, I mean, I, I don't know exactly like Mustang is a premium for Ford, but VW, I think overall is maybe a more premium brand than Ford. So I think, um, Ford is kind of positioning itself to be a little bit more cost, um, competitive with VW. That's, that's my take on it. That makes sense because a, a lot, a lot of these variants, of course, are a little bit more expensive than um, the the ID four. But the base one now that costs now just sorry forty three thousand uh, dollars. That's getting before incentive. That's getting pretty close. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm really curious to see how much volume we're gonna see with the Mustang Mach E because right now, like it, it is. Definitely competitive with the ID4 at that level. With the well, of course, ID4 also gets the seventy-five hundred dollar tax credit. Uh, it's definitely competitive with the Model Y, uh, thanks to the tax credit. Uh, but is it going to be competitive after the tax credit? That's a big question. But sometimes it's a question for probably a year from now, something like that, because of course. 
they are about to start deliveries. Uh, by the way, starting deliveries, uh, those prices are MSRP. So now we're, we're seeing uh, the biggest, like the biggest change really is the um, Mustang Mackie Premium rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. They both got a $3,000 down now to $47,000 and 40, $49,700. So $47,000 and $50,000 really. So at those prices before, uh, yeah, so that's almost tells me it's more like a Model Y competitor there because with those price decrease and the 7,500, uh, the because the premium all wheel drive is the closest competitor to to the uh, to the Model Y mm -hmm. in terms of specs. That's the closest of Tesla still beats them, of course, in range, but like this is the dual motor too and everything. So uh, that's that's closer. And now you have basically the same price before the incentive so i think that makes a big difference but i think ford is over a hundred thousand deliveries now in the u.s with the uh with the tax credit i don't know like from what no, the, i think the i think they are yeah fusion but i think the plug-in hybrids to get it too yeah so, but they they don't sell many of those i i don't know what they're at um, it's been years though it's been like 10 years <laughs> I, know, I know but still like i don't think that i i think that's like I don't know. They're probably at around a hundred thousand or something. Yeah, I think they're just over a hundred thousand now. And but but the thing is, they get to two hundred thousand, and you still have another six months to do it. So let let's say they, they deliver like with them with the Mac key it goes faster. Let's say a year from now they get to two hundred thousand. They still have six months over that. So still into into twenty twenty two, they're gonna have the full tax credit. I think so. And of course, like Tesla, like GM, they're gonna try to play like the the numbers to, to deliver it at the very beginning of the quarter and whatnot. Uh, yeah, uh, at the end of the quarter. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna optimize it to get the most uh tax credit possible that's what i'm saying right all right another good news uh this week the volvo xc40 electric which is unfortunately called the xc40 recharge i'm not sure i like the name but i like the car though car is sweet looking it is right here um it was on the last year if you remember uh, around around this time last year too and uh, now they announced the start of production because deliveries are going to happen very soon. Car is being produced in, in Belgium by Volvo. Uh, well, we've seen the Polestar now. They started the delivery of the Polestar 2. They deliver a few Polestar 1, 2. But now this is the first uh, Volvo branded all-electric vehicle. And uh, it's one that's actually uh, come as a electric version of an existing car from Volvo. The XC40 is a Already one of their best-selling SUV, CUV, whatever you want to call that. It's a small, small SUV, really. Uh, I don't know about you. I really like the form factor of it. Uh, nice little front, interior. Does it? Yeah. Uh, does it look less luxurious than the the Polestar with you? You just been in the Polestar recently, right? Uh, I would say similar. Uh, yeah. It's it is kind of weird. The Polestar is supposed to be a premium brand over Volvo. Like Volvo is kind of Audi, and Polestar is supposed to be like. Porsche kind of, you know, maybe not like that, but yeah, because their prices yeah. are not Porsche prices, right. really. Um, I love the 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 look of it, and even more importantly for our family, like my wife loves it, and uh, that's like one of the first times she's ever like seen a car that I show her, like an EV. You know, I show her the BMW i3, and she's like, no, no. <laughs> well, so a lot of people like that, <laughs> right. but um, this one, she was like, oh yeah, we I, we could definitely have that car. And it's all-wheel drive, so you know we're up here in the uh, northeast, so um, that's a big factor in buying. Mm -hmm. So, and there's not—it's actually strange. There's not a lot of EVs out there with uh, all-wheel drive. Um, so there's a lot of things going for this. Obviously, people trust Volvo. Um, it's got a uh, Android Auto uh, system, yeah. Which which Pretty we cool. both agree is like the most competitive to Tesla in terms of uh, car UI. Yeah, I mean, a lot of things like, you know, voice recognition, it blows Tesla out of the water. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's also people uh, like iPhone people are like, oh, you know, I hate Android. Mm -hmm. This is all Android. Like, so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think most people don't really care, but there's there's a, you know, sliver of the uh, the nine to five Mac community that's like, no, <laughs> not going to do it. I don't care. So, yeah, you have a good input into that, too, with uh, yeah. your other job. Uh, yeah, so the announcement is really that they just started production. You, you can see the production line here in Belgium. The cars are rolling out now, so the deliveries are going to start in the, at a dealership soon. 
Uh, they, they say that they already sold out for the year, so they didn't disclose the kind of volume they plan to produce this year, but it's sold out anyway. So um, be on the lookout. And they haven't announced uh, US prices yet, too. I think I'm just seeing like $50,000, $55,000 before incentive. Uh, and of course, Volvo is uh, going to have that $7,500 uh, to tax rate it. So it, it should be an interesting pricing. Uh, I think it's going to sell well, really. Yeah, I th they they sold out the year already, didn't they? Or yeah. Something? And then they yeah, sold... yeah, but I think it's mostly Europe, though. Like, yeah, right. uh, yeah, it could it be ten. It... Yeah, it's There's it's no produced in here. Belgium. I think they're gonna focus the deliveries in, um, in Europe, especially since it, it's gonna help Volvo. I think Volvo just now with with their hybrid cells, they they, they are already fine with the new uh, EU uh, regulation. So everything else they sell now is is credit that they can sell. To other automakers, so Interesting. this is money for them. All right, do we have a bunch of questions we can get to yep. before we end the show? All right, uh, let's get down. All right, so Satchel says my MCU went out. Do you think it's worth upgrading to MCU two? What do you think? Well, uh, I don't know if it's under warranty that you they're gonna replace it with the old MCU, but apparently they did fix that problem now. So if you get the, the the old MCU, you shouldn't have to expect it to break again. So there's that to take into account. Uh, but yeah, you, you have a few more features with the MCU too that 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 could be fun. Like that, but that, that's up to you. Like I don't really use those features that much myself. So I'm like, all right, is it worth upgrading or or, or not? I, I would it really depend on your use case. It is more responsive, so that's that's useful for everything. But uh, it's very much a personal choice because it's not cheap. Is it two thousand or twenty five hundred? Is that one, one of like the that. other? Yeah, it's not cheap. All right, headwind head twisters asks, will the Tesla semi trucks be used using the new battery cells? Yes, that's that was a clear part of the presentation there that they basically need the new battery cell for the Tesla semi. All right, and then uh, Knight Rider says LG stake is to guarantee quantity for Tesla. Yeah, I mean, for, for, would make sense for sure. They can it, that securing long term battery demand is very important. And if you, you yeah have like a seat on the board or something, you can probably sway the company. But at the same time, like I said, I don't, I, don't, I, I, I put the less than fifty percent chance of that deal happening right now. Yeah. All right, GM has the Hummer EV, the Cadillac Lyric, Buick Electra. Why do they seem desperate to do the Badger? Uh, Raymond, that is a really good question. <laughs> I have no idea. To be fair, they, they changed their tone a little bit this week about the Nikola deal. They did they did say like that. Uh, they did comment on the now uh, Trevor Milton is under like uh, sexual harassment, sexual abuse, really uh, investigation in Utah. Uh, and because of that, like it sounds like because of that they changed their tone and uh, at least the comment that they sent to us regarding the the deal not closing was supposed to close this week and it didn't but they extended the deadline so they're still looking to close it apparently um that's kind of weird too right because trevor is not even in the company anymore he's out now like he, he's completely I'm, out he's just I mean, he, he's like a stakeholder yeah he's still a stakeholder but he has no influence technically on the company anymore uh, so I don't, I don't see why that would change the, the thing. Like it just, it just show that Trevor is a, even uh, again, again, those are allegations. So we, uh, we'll let the investigation go through, but if they are true, it would just make him a shittier person than he's already is. So <laughs> I, I, I don't see how that would affect the deal. What, what, what just came out though, uh, I think Reuters or, uh, Bloomberg reported today is that apparently what GM is talking about why they didn't close the deal is that they want a bigger stake in the company not a smaller one which oh uh, boy i mean it makes sense because of the deal was made that when the, the price per share was higher now it's lower so they probably just want to negotiate that again but at the same time i'm like huh eh, just just pull away from the deal and use the bandwidth for something that's worth it right all right david lee on investing asks can you share your expectations on if tesla will be able to hit their 500k annual delivery guidance target Looks like extremely likely to me after the performance yeah. uh, this I mean, quarter. 
I mean, the run rate right now, 140,000, multiply that times four. That's uh, what? Five. It's 20, yeah, 28. Yeah, it's getting close to 600,000 production right. uh, unit per year. Of course, that's going to be the exit. That's the exit rate right now. Um, there's, there's, is there room for more capacity this quarter? Yes, not that much though. Of course, I think the biggest capacity improvement going to come next year with the, the new factories. But um, yeah, it, it seems likely to me at this point. I think so too. But look out for that end of the quarter push again. This quarter. Yeah, end always. of the year push now. It's going to be a big one. I know it's going to be weird when they don't have it. They're going to be like, "Wow, it's yeah. the end of the quarter and nobody's freaking out." Yeah, and don't hold your breath on that too because I mean, the new factories are coming up next year, but like the real volume probably not until like 2022, so and then maybe like the real real volume not until 2023. All right, a commenter asks or says the $25,000 Tesla, I'm assuming, won't have side mirror or steering wheel if it's full self working is working. I think they're referring to the twenty-five thousand dollar Tesla. That is pure speculation at this point. Um, well, well, it was announced officially that last week. It was announced, but, yeah, but uh, we don't know anything about it. Yeah, um, the program itself. Yeah, but uh, it would be interesting to see. I mean, he, Elon said it was going to have uh, full self-driving capability, but I would imagine that would cost a lot more than twenty-five thousand. So there probably will be a non-self-driving option. Yeah. Any idea yeah, if Tesla yeah. will launch solar panels retro not roof in Canada and when? I think that's a quick red question. Uh, it's definitely not a priority for them. I think if they expand to other countries, it's not going to be Canada first because, I mean, not everywhere, but a lot of Canada has already very low electricity rates. So it doesn't make a ton of sense to launch solar. Already a lot of renewable in the mix too, especially where I am here in Quebec. It's almost uh, 100% really. And um, so I think there's other markets that Tesla would, would launch solar first. Uh, Germany, Australia, uh, other places like that makes more make, make more sense. Yeah. So eventually, probably, because their two business goes go hand in hand. And I can see like solar roof, maybe like uh, all it does mention, just panels, retrofit, not roof. But solar roof, uh, just for the aesthetics, I think people want it. <laughs> No, it's a big thing to shell out. <laughs> you got to shell out a lot of money because there's no incentive here, too. So, like, uh, it's going to be a $50,000 roof. Uh, All right. Uh, Dejan S says Tesla is crashing it again. I think that's referring to the stock price. It's yeah. at the end of the day pretty down. Uh, like yeah, telling you that the Wall Street expectation were way too high on, on this. Like, uh, I think you should have been way lower and. uh I don't know why. Well, also the broader market was down too, so that didn't help. And Tesla always has bigger swings than the rest of the market. So. Right. All right. Michael Bergmark says uh, it's not minor. I think he's referring to uh, the update. He, he highly appreciates this update. Oh, yeah. The, I think he, he said that at the Bluetooth thing. Yeah. I'm not sure why, but sure. I'd like to know your use case for it. All right. Uh, Dave Froman with Y ramping in China in the next three months, I'd say they hit that 500k that's a good point uh well officially model y deliveries are not planned for this year so but i i agree that in, we might see a surprise in some deliveries coming in uh at the very end maybe maybe a few thousand we'll see interesting question out of left field here uh mo herbert or a bear says <laughs> is it true that vermont has more subarus than people i think <laughs> i think that's a no <laughs> and uh, not sure why that's a question for this. Maybe he's on the wrong channel. Uh, is Tesla a good buyer or should we wait? Uh, that's that's a Ooh, it's, it's a that's hard. A, it's an evergreen question. Yeah, it's a hard recommendation. I, I did unload some this week, to be honest. Uh, I, I, I thought I was getting a little bit higher and I thought expectation also were too high for the for the deliveries. Um, it did actually beat my expectations, so that that's good. But I thought the broader market expectation were too high. All right. Do you regret the polemics you had with Elon because he doesn't answer you on Twitter anymore? Does that <laughs> does that make you sad? I don't regret it one bit because I I think I, I'm in the right and and what he, uh, I criticized him from and why he was mad at me. 
And a uh, recent conversation uh, with him kind of confirmed that to me. Uh, don't think it was very reasonable in that in that conversation, to be honest. And that, um, so yeah. no, I don't. I don't regret it. I don't. I don't, I don't need you know to respond to me on Twitter. I'm still gonna ask question to him. Like people, uh, that that's something that frustrates me when people I ask him a question, and people are like, "He's not gonna respond to you." I'm like, "Okay," but here's the thing, people. I need to write about uh, about Tesla, and when I have a question, to Tesla, Tesla, literally, people, it's the only automaker in the world right now that doesn't have press relation team. The you, you, journalists, you can send them question. It, there's no one answering the question. It, it, literally, no one. So, Elon is the press team right now. So I'm gonna have to send him question. I don't care if he answers or not. I'm just gonna send him. Right and until there's an alternative to it. Right, and it, and Tesla can't say that we didn't ask these questions. Yeah, because that you know, like when when a, a typical company has a problem and they say, "Oh, the journalists, you know, they didn't they didn't ask us." Mm -hmm. Well, we did ask, and they just didn't respond. Well, and now yeah. now we stop asking completely because we we basically got the confirmation that there's no one even looking at those uh, right at uh, the, inquiries, the press, press inquiries, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, we got two more high from Australia, and then on Battery Day, Elon talked about the battery being the structure of the car. Do you think it is, if it is part of the structure, it will not be replaceable after a hundred thousand miles? Hmm. Uh, I don't know what the mileage would have to do with the replaceability. Um, I'm imagining they're making it replaceable. It's well, maybe... I, I think they don't know. I think that's the the whole point of having the long, longer uh, longevity for the for the battery, so that because for sure it's a problem. Like right now, if they're probably the battery pack, you just replace the battery pack, and it's not part of the chassis. But now that it's going to be part of the chassis, that's definitely a, a good uh, question that you that Angel Sanchez is bringing up. But I don't understand the implication that you would need to replace it after a hundred thousand miles. Uh, Tesla, the batteries in the Teslas last definitely more than a hundred thousand miles for most guaranteed cases. Guaranteed for a hundred thousand miles, or what oh, good point, good point, good point. If you're thinking about the warranty, I would assume that Tesla would increase that warranty uh, with the new battery. If uh, it's indeed a million mile battery, it might as well increase the the warranty with it. Yeah, it does feel a lot more, uh, you know, without the modules and with you know, like. Tesla had a bad module, they could theoretically just replace the module and not the whole thing. But now they're just gluing all those big cells into a, a pack and and uh, it feels like if one of the cells goes bad, you're kind of just out of luck. So it'll be interesting to see how that yeah. plays out. I'm sure there's some nuance to it that we don't understand. And I, I think that's pretty much it. All right. Well, we appreciate your question this week. Appreciate you watching on youtube or your podcast app uh, if you can give us a thumbs up there it's always appreciated and it always help the show and uh, we're gonna see you same time same place next week yeah we don't go out so much so come see us <laughs> <laughs>